right. Let's get started. So the first thing, the first thing that I want to talk about is how we, uh, in this, in chapter six, when we're talking about triangles, how we label the triangles. So uh, this is what we'll we'll see. Capital A, capital B, and capital C are angles. And generally, since we're dealing with triangles, angles are measured in degrees. So for, for this stuff, you're, you're going to want your calculator in degree mode. And then we label the sides of the triangles with small letters opposite the angles. So small a, small b, small c are side lengths. And what we're talking about in chapter six are oblique triangles, which means uh, no, they don't have any right angles. So we can't use our familiar uh, right triangle trigonometry techniques on these triangles. And law of sines, we're going to use for when we have two angles on a side. Toe, two. So we're going to use it on angle, angle, side triangles and ASA triangles, angle, side, angle triangles. We can sometimes use it on side, side, angle triangles. <coughs> no side, side, angle. <laughs> um, we can use a lot of signs on, on a side, side, angle triangle, but we get with side, side, angle we get a possible ambiguous case. And the ambiguous case we'll talk about separately next time. And if you remember back from geometry, when you were proving triangles congruent, you, you could not use a side-side angle theorem to prove triangles congruent. And that's because there are Sometimes, depending on the configuration of the triangle, there are two possible triangles that have these two sides and this particular angle. And we'll talk about that more next time. All right, so law of sines. Very friendly, very nice, easy to work with. We're going to say A over the sine of A equals B over the sine of B equals C over the sine of C. We can also do the reciprocals and it's equivalent. Sine of A over A equals sine of B over B equals sine of C over C. And I choose which, which one of these versions I want to use depending on whether we're, look, whether we're looking for a side or an angle. And it makes it a little easier to, to work with. But well, you can use either one. Um, so what I want to do is go through a couple of examples using the law of science, and then we'll talk about why it works. And the why it works is going to be important for how we determine whether or not we have an ambiguous case with a side-side angle triangle. Oh, and I want to add one piece of information. If the problem asks you to solve, means to find all missing parts. So you get problems that say solve the triangle, which means find all the missing parts. All right, questions? OK, let's look at a couple of examples. So for the first one, we know that a is 123 degrees, B is 41 degrees, and side A is 10. 
we want to find side C. If the problem doesn't give you a, a drawing, make a drawing. I, it, I think it's always helpful to be able to see. Um, I'll call this, since that looks like <coughs> the biggest angle, I'll do this. So this is 123 degrees. Uh, this is 41 degrees. And this is 10. And this is C. All right, so to use law of sines, I'm going to do, I'm going to match up the angle A and the side A. And I want to match up angle C and side C. Oh, we don't have angle C. Oh, all the angles in a triangle add up to 180. Oh, yeah. So we can say that C is 180 minus 123 minus 41. And that gives me uh, 16 degrees. No, de definitely not to scale. This is just a generic triangle. All right, so now we can set up our law of sines. I'm going to say, since we're looking for a side, I'm going to say 10 over sine 123 equals C over sine 16. And then what I usually do here, I'm just going to rearrange it before I start calculating. So I'm going to get C equals 10 sine 16 divided by the sine of 123. And you can put this in your calculator just like this, but you would want to close the parentheses on the sine 16. Because otherwise your calculator is going to do sine uh, 16 divided by the sine of 123 and then try to take the sine of that. Yes? How do you know uh, when to use the A over sine A or sine A over A? I would use, I use the A over sine A because I'm finding a side length. So that leaves, so all I have to do is multiply. If you did it the other way around, you have to do two steps, but it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So I would use the other one if I was solving for an angle. All right, so this gives me, when I plug into the calculator, <clears throat> we get uh, about 3.29. If you do some intermediate calculations, uh, you should keep, when you do the sine of 16 or the sine of 123, you should keep four decimal places because you can get, your answer can get, uh, your accuracy can go way down if you round in the middle of your cal calculations. All right, questions there? Okay, let's look at another one where we want to solve the triangle. A is 95 degrees. Uh, C is 68 degrees. And B is um, 115. We want to solve the triangle. All right, so here's my picture. Generic triangle. So that's 95 degrees, 68 degrees, uh, and side B is 115, and there's A and there's C. All right, what's going to be the easiest thing to find first? Angle C, right? C is 180 minus 95. Oh. Oh. So, so we need B. And that gives me uh, 17. So there's one piece of information that we needed. 
17 degrees. So what do we want to solve for first? Should we do them in alphabetical order? A over sine of 95 equals uh, 115 over the sine of 17. So A is 115 sine 95 over sine of 117. And plug that in my calculator, and I get about 391.84. And then to find side C, I'm going to use the same, uh, this same ratio here. So I'm going to say C over the sine of 68. Mr. Yeah? Shouldn't it be sine of 17, not sine of 117? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. So it's Friday okay, afternoon. It's his birthday! Jeez! <laughs> There we go. <laughs> All right. There's our calculation. Plug that into your calculator. And you get that that is about 364.69. All right, questions on this example. Love signs, friendly, nice, easy to use. Let's talk about why it works. We will need to know something about this to work with the ambiguous case. All right, so here's my triangle. Just like before, my oblique triangle. And what we're going to do is turn this into, since we have all this nice stuff that we know about right triangles, we're going to turn this into a couple of right triangles. So what I'm going to do is draw in the altitude or the height. So turn it into a couple of right triangles and I'm going to label that H. So there's the height of the triangle. From the triangle on the left I can say that the sine of A is the opposite over hypotenuse h over c. So, so the height, just multiply both sides by c, is c sine a. From the triangle on the right, I can do a similar thing. Sine of c is opposite over hypotenuse, h over a. Solve for the height. The height is a sine c. Well, the heights, these, the height is they're the same. So C sine A equals A sine C. Divide both sides by sine of A, both sides by sine of C, and I get A over sine of A equals C over sine of C. Whoa. So each of these is the height of the triangle. I could do the same thing to get another, another part of our equation by drawing a height to, to the opposite side using a different vertex. And then I'd get the third piece by drawing the height from the third vertex, doing the exact same thing. And you get all the parts of your, all the parts of law of signs, law of signs. Finding the height of the triangle is going to be the key when we work with the ambiguous case. So we'll be doing this calculation uh, for the ambiguous case a lot. All right, questions? Okay.